Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Friends, today is what I call an editorial video. I'll be doing an editorial video every once in a while because while I'm uh, studying various uh, gene therapies and various news articles, I get ideas and I put them on a sheet separately and at some point of time they all accumulate and something new comes out of it and that goes into my editorial video. Today's editorial video is part two of the cost of uh, uh, gene therapies. In the first part I had uh, lament how the high cost of production of gene therapies is going to be the bane of gene therapies because such high costs cannot be paid by most people even in G7 countries and it's not sustainable. So the cost has to come down so that the sales price can be reduced and more people can be covered. Today I'm going to talk about a solution and uh, I would like you to watch this video till the end and then give me your comments. With that said, let's get started. <music> So friends, uh, welcome back. Uh, I, I was thinking about the recent successes, Chimera, uh, uh, Zinteglo, and uh, Skysona, and very soon to happen, Exacel and Lowercell. These are all priced very high, and even though they are priced high, uh, I think that in order to make profits, they'll have to uh, sell a lot of uh, units. And it's very expensive even for the payer uh, who is going to pay and insurance companies. And also there is um, this question for a once and done therapy. Uh, how reliable is it that it's once and done? And so insurance companies would like to know uh, how good it would be. So I had spoken about all those challenges in part one. Today I'm going to talk about a solution. And the solution, I must say with full disclosure, I'm an Indo-Canadian. So when I talk about India being the solution, um, uh, you would understand where I'm coming from. So India has demonstrated its ability to deliver high-tech at low cost, not only in the software sector, but also in space. The software development outsourcing has matured significantly and it has delivered huge returns and also near sourcing is a refinement on that outsourcing uh, uh, philosophy that we had before. And everything is working out well and it has driven down the cost and enabled enterprises to multiply their profits, increase the bottom line and so on. And apart from that, we have also seen India's Mars mission, which was sent on a budget, which was less than the budget for the Hollywood movie space in which you had Sandra Bullock and George Clooney. So uh, that, that demonstrates the capability of India. And more recently, we had the moon mission from India, which did a soft landing and also did a bit of uh, research with the Land Rover, uh, that, uh, which their uh, Vikram Rover, which they had, uh, which uh, went across the moon surface and uh, did some sampling. So uh, it all shows that India has the capability. And um, if you look at uh, the requirements of a clinical trial for a therapy, let us take the HIV therapy, for example, or hepatitis B. It needs biodiversity. In India, there is the genomic diversity, the uh, the amount of variation in the population is significant and you have almost 20 percent of uh, the world population in india so you get a very good sample size for all kind of clinical research and it can be a robust footing on which uh, you could do uh, clinical trials and uh, also there are billions of people in asia and africa who will benefit from india developing itself as a research center for uh, genomic medicine and also if you look at the uh, necessities for being a, a research center. You need highly qualified uh, personnel. India is producing a lot of per, uh, PhDs because India has got around 1,182 universities, which includes central and state government universities and deemed and private universities, as well as autonomous higher education institutes. And the Indian Institute of Science is at the top of the pile it's the topmost uh, university in India, and it produces some of the most uh, uh, highly talented Indian scientists. And we also have the Indian Institute of Technology and Indian Institute of Management, uh, which are producing top-notch professionals whom you can see heading uh, the lot of organizations in uh, developed nations, including United States. So India is producing high-quality English-speaking uh, personnel. And according to the recently released OECD report, India is producing slightly over 24,000 doctoral graduates, and India is ranked fourth uh, when compared to the United States, which produces around 68,000 graduates and tops the list. 
If we talk about uh, the objectives of the Indian political dispensation at this point of time, Indian government wants, uh, the current Prime Minister Modi wants India to be a multi-trillion dollar economy and he's working towards that and he's strategizing. He's a very strategic administrator and uh, he has, um, uh, he's got really clear objectives and he starts working towards them in a project-based manner and he generally achieves most of those objectives and his objective is to make India a multi-trillion dollar economy and becoming a pharmacy a clinical trial and a biologics clinical trial powerhouse would fit into this vision very, very nicely. And if you look at the current overview of what we have, uh, I'll take you to the website. At present, all the uh, drugs and biologics have to be approved by Central Drug Standard Control Organization, which is part of the Directorate General of Health Services, which is a component of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. And it has got a facility for a clinical trial, and um, it talks about various processes that are available, and there are PDFs to download uh, and get familiar with. And if you go to the home uh, homepage, you will see that it's uh, headed by uh, the Honorable Minister, Dr. Mansuk Mandviya, who is a practicing physician, who is now a minister. So it's a very good sign that uh, we have um, a physician uh, heading uh, this uh, ministry. And um, one of the best things that they could do uh, is start working towards uh, creating a clinical trial framework, uh, study how FDA does uh, clinical trials and biologics approval, look at the documentation that FDA looks for, look at the standards that uh, FDA is uh, looking at. Because FDA is the gold standard at this point of time for medicine across the world. And there are many countries where they don't have uh, their own approval process and they just accept FDA approval and allow the drugs to be sold in the country. Uh, India has got its own uh, system, which I showed you, uh, the website. Uh, but India could do well by studying the FDA approach and then coming up with uh, uh, infrastructure and uh, process for clinical trials in India for uh, small molecules as well as for uh, genomic uh, medicine and biologics. And uh, uh, then there should be some kind of a bilateral agreement with the United States so that there can be interoperability. And the objective being that the phase one and preclinical trial could be done in India. Uh, and the cheap manpower will uh, reduce the cost and uh, it will reduce the, it will increase the cash runway for various genomic companies because they can do more with less. So in terms of uh, costs also, let me, let me talk about what it costs in India. So research scientist salary in India ranges between two and a half lakh rupees to 13 lakh rupees with the average of around uh, six and a half lakh rupees. So lakh is the Indian way of uh, counting. But for perspective, if we translate that into US dollar, it comes to a minimum of $8,000 a year and a maximum of around $16,000 a year as salary for a research scientist. And I have taken the same statistics for US with Zip Recruiter as of October 11, 2023, it says that a research scientist in US uh, draws around 131,385 a year. So if you were to compare that with what you would have to pay at the most for an Indian research scientist, it's $16,000 a year. So if a company like, for example, uh, Excision Bio, uh, which is um, doing the HIV research for EBT 101 or American Gene Technologies or Ad Immune, which is doing AGT 103-T, which is a HIV functional cure. These are all genomics and biologics. And if they are uh, doing the research, if they did the research in India, assuming that there was equivalence and an agreement between FDA and uh, uh, India for phase one clinical trial and preclinicals, you can imagine FDA th approved therapy for HIV would be so inexpensive because preclinical and phase one slash two would be done in India. And then, the final phase could be done in both India as well as uh, US and uh, Europe with EMA. And the resulting certification would cover a whole lot of uh, biodiversity and it will also cost a, a lot less. And when these kind of medicine costs less, it means that the Medicare uh, would be paying less and the Medicare budgets can be slashed a little bit because it will cost less to provide more. Same thing would be true for NIH and uh, in Europe where the government would provide uh, medical care for its citizen. And as far as Africa and Asia is concerned, the population will get cheaper medicines and the governments would be able to provide uh, most of that for free for its people without stressing its own budget too much.
So there is so much of uh, benefits to be had if you just look at the researchers' salaries. Now next, if you look at the cost of land and premises and everything, it's already been proven in software uh, industry that if you were to put an R&D center in India, uh, the cost, capital cost is also very low because cost of land and property is less, cost of manpower is less, really qualified English-speaking manpower, and the uh, productivity is also pretty high. So it's a, absolutely a no-brainer. I'm just wondering why India has not yet done... Maybe they're already uh, doing this in the background and I don't know about it. So, But I think that that's a really good opportunity. So just imagine this. Imagine a future where, say, five years down the line, the government of India has worked out, it, it sent a team to study how FDA does the clinical trials, and it has got a working committee and some kind of bilateral agreement, uh, like the Artemis, for example, Artemis Accord, something like that, uh, between EMA and uh, FDA. And then they all agree on some kind of documentation and uh, research standards and everything so that India can start off uh, by offering incentives. India could initially offer incentives to all these companies uh, in terms of uh, tax uh, tax concessions, in terms of um, subsidy, uh, and so on, just the way we do for automobile industry. And India would like to do that uh, because India would like to become a trillion-dollar economy and uh, biologics and other research could form a good uh, chunk of that uh, uh, target. And also, all the research graduates in India would be able to increase their salaries and get better quality of uh, research opportunities within India uh, so that's also there for India. So all those things are going for India. And as far as the genomic companies are concerned, many of them are running on very tight balance sheets and they've got shorter runway, cash runway. Instead of doing equity dilution, they could start uh, doing research in India uh, for preclinical as well as phase one slash two clinical trial. And uh, they would be able to uh, have a wider pipeline because instead of throwing away uh, uh, candidates from their pipeline, which they thought was slightly risky, they could include them in the pipeline and do the preclinical trials in India and qualify them uh, to go further ahead. So overall, it's going to be a win-win for everybody. So friends, this was my idea, and uh, I'm going to be making the same video in Hindi, and I would be requesting uh, the viewers in our Hindi channel to make sure that it reaches across to the Indian government so that um, if they are not yet started looking at this, they could start uh, working on this concept. Because I see a lot of prospects out there, and it's not a pie in the sky because we already done that in software technology with outsourcing, and we have demonstrated the capability in the space sector. So uh, already a lot of generics are being manufactured in India, and also India has got outsourced manufacturing for pharma. So I think it's a, a no-brainer. It has to happen sooner rather than later. I hope it happens sooner. So that's all for today, my friends. And I would like you to give me your feedback in the comment section below. Uh, it will be nice to have a discussion. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.